to Bent Not Broken, where we empower and motivate women by sharing real life stories of adversity and provide expert advice on how to overcome those obstacles and help you live your best life. Now, here's your host, Juanita Kelly. Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 11 of Bent Not Broken. I'm your host, Juanita Kelly. One thing that many of us struggle with in our lives is letting go of past experiences so that we can create new ones. I have a very dear friend of roughly 25 years or so who is a great example of letting go and embracing the new you. She was married and in a one-sided relationship for over 10 years. I say one-sided because she did all of the work in her marriage to keep it going. She played all the roles in the household, like housekeeper, the cook, the personal shopper, the planner, the budgeter, the organizer, the laundry service. I know this sounds all too familiar to all you guys at home listening. Um, She also was mother and father to her children. And she also initiated all of the intimate moments that her and her husband shared. This enabled her husband to focus all of his attention on creating his dreams, and she felt used and unloved. Now, you might be thinking, she was doing too much, and no, that couldn't be you. Or you could be thinking, hey, this is me, and I'm her. Well, you know what? She got burnt out, and she soon realized she never did anything for herself. Each day, she lived for another person in her household and never herself. Soon she got divorced and she started her new life. And because of her fear of the unknown, she found herself not dating and basically living the same way that she had all those years previously. On today's episode, we'll be talking about putting that stake into the ground and creating the life that you want while undoing the past and embracing the future with author, speaker, and coach, Junie Moon. Today's episode is entitled Dating Over 30. It's a whole new ballgame. We'll be back. Welcome back to Bit Not Broken Podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of having Junie Moon join us. Junie, it's so wonderful to have you here. Please tell us a little bit about your journey, a little bit about yourself. I am so excited to learn more about what it is that you do. I am so excited to be here with you. I I love your energy. I love your message. Total love fest happening between the two of us. (laughs) No, it's phenomenal, isn't it? (laughs) It is, you know, and when women come together with a similar purpose and message, it's just magic. I'm thrilled to be here. So I am the love coach. I help women in midlife put a stake in the ground and have amazing love lives. And that could Mm -hmm. be with or without a partner. And how do I do that? I help them let go of the past, undo the programming, any of the old beliefs and things that have tripped them up along the way that have them thinking they can't have extraordinary love lives. Basically, I help women feel empowered and strong and clear so that they can feel amazing and amazing in whatever shape, size they're in, no matter how old they are. It's about claiming their beauty inside and out and knowing how deserving of love and life they are. So that's what I do. You know, Junie, sometimes we get to a point in our lives when we just look back and we go, well, you know what? I had my fun in my 20s or I had my fun in my 30s. And now I'm a woman of a certain age, 40 and over. And I just think it's time for me just to settle down and just kind of be with myself and not take that chance that I once took when I was in my 20s and go out and mingle and meet people and enjoy my life. What do you tell your clients that say, you know what, I think I'm just going to give up. It's time for me to let the younger people have fun. Ha, that's a great question. And I would be asking a lot more questions to that statement. (laughs) First, some women really absolutely love their lives Mm -hmm. and say, you know, I have had a great life. I love what I have created for my life. And now I want to have my life look like this. And that could look like on their own and traveling with sisters, building a business with a partner, without a partner. What I want when I speak with somebody is to really get clear. Is it something they're truly desiring or are they giving up? Like you said, are they going, well, I don't really want to look at that anymore. I don't want to put myself out there anymore. I don't want to take the risk that I might get my heart broken. And that's 
typically what happens when somebody comes to me in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, most of the women I work with are 40s to 60s. They really want to look at what they want in their life, why they want it. And if they are choosing, they want to choose it consciously and not from the programming that's having them go, don't bother, it's not worth it, or you can't have it anyway. That's usually from pain. Mm -hmm. Someone can come to you and they have this pain and this trauma of their past experiences, and that's actually holding them back from having these new adventures in the next round of their life. Exactly. And, you know, we hear the comfort zone. We all hear about life happens outside the comfort zone. And at the end of the day, we've built some really great walls around our heart. We have built sometimes a fortress (laughs) and drawbridges and no one can go past that big solid wall and we feel safe. On some level, that's awesome. That has been a great strategy to get us through and to not risk having pain and hurt and disappointment. And we could choose to stay there. Man, a lot of people choose to stay behind those walls, but there's a cost in staying behind those walls. There's a price we pay when we say, you know what, this is all I want. This is good enough. I feel safe. I'm just going to stay in this little cocoon. We miss out on adventure, like you said. We miss out on opening up our heart to more love, connection, fun, and intimacy. And so what I tell people is you don't have to jump off the cliff and just open up the doors and break down the walls. We could poke some holes in the walls consciously. I call it strategic vulnerability. We want to be able to open up our hearts, but we also want to do it in a way that's not going to throw us under the bus. So that takes time and it takes some unfolding, but it doesn't have to take years. We do have to realize though that there are strategies that we've laid down to make sure that we don't get hurt, but we're also going to feel pain if we don't address these walls, these limitations. We miss out on a lot of life. Why is it that people who want love sabotage themselves? It's the same thing. It's the strategies we've picked up. So for example, I had a client that came to me and she said, I don't understand why I keep dating the same guy. I keep finding these emotionally unavailable guys. I keep chasing these guys. Then I find myself taking care of these guys. And then I sabotage it because they're not the kind of guy I want to be with. Why do I keep looking for that type of guy? And so I'm a shadow worker, shadow being the part of us that we've disowned, a part of us that we go, we better not express that aspect because if I really go for that, or if I really show up in this way, I'll get hurt. As a shadow worker, we shine a light on the patterns. Okay, so she was dating the same guy over and over, and then she ended up sabotaging it by stepping out on them, by literally having affairs, of course, feeling bad and shame and then breaking up and being alone in her 50s. And so we looked at that pattern. She saw it. She didn't understand it. Why would she keep doing that? And then we do special processes in shadow work. We see the pattern. We see the pain. And then we figure out where did this original pattern come from? And sure enough, she was able to zero in on something that happened as a child, something that happened with her parents. And she witnessed something with her parents that had her go, oh, I never want to have a relationship like that. Also unconsciously gave her a message. I don't really want to take a risk on having love in my life or a relationship. But she didn't realize that. And as soon as we were able to really zoom in on what happens, and she was able to do this process to shift it, I am not kidding. Within a few months, she met the man of her dreams. It's been almost two years. She's got a ring on her finger and she's thrilled totally broke the pattern, but she sabotaged herself because somewhere beneath the surface, if you imagine the tip of the iceberg is the conscious place. 95% of our brain is unconscious and that's where all the programming is. That's what was sabotaging her. The belief that love was painful. Amazing. How did you get involved in learning the process and understanding what shadow work is? Well, I had a lot of pain. (laughs) I had a lot of patterns that were really hurting me. I was in a 20-year marriage, walking on eggshells, unable to really express my opinions, express my truth. I had very low self-esteem. I was really scared to be me and I micromanaged everything. And I used food to get me through. And so I was 200 pounds 18 years ago and miserable. And I thought I had a food problem, which I did. And after diets and weekend workshops and you know, therapy, I couldn't break the pattern. And I found shadow work. And I started to do these special processes. And I got my voice back. I got my clarity back. I got me back. Mm -hmm. I had lost 
my truth, my essence, access to all of who I am. And sadly, the marriage didn't last, but I moved on. And now I have the most amazing love life. I have an amazing partner, but I couldn't have done that without the shadow work. And that's why I do the work I do. A lot of times we do the therapy or we read a book and we go, okay, now I understand why I have this pattern. That's just not enough to break the pattern. Shadow work broke the pattern. And so now, you know, I have my programs to help women break their patterns and call in next level love. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I saw a video that you had up on YouTube. I know in that video, you spoke about words that your father gave Mm -hmm. you, advice that he gave you. Can you share with us what happened? Absolutely. So years ago, I had a TV show and I interviewed lots of different people. And I was about to interview this man very well well-known international body painter, I said, you know, hey, why don't you paint me on camera? And then I realized he painted naked people. And I was like, oh my God, I can't (laughs) believe I just asked that. Yes. Oh yeah. It was one of those. Oh my God. And then I went, wow, I have come such a long way. I had gotten a message in the video, by the way, I got naked and body painted for tens of thousands of people. It was amazing. I, yeah. I applaud you. It was Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Tens of thousands of people have watched this video where I literally am naked and body painted. The message that I have in the video is I wasn't always like that. I couldn't leave the house. I felt so much shame around my body, no matter what size I was, whether I was 200 or 140, I was always feeling ugly. You asked about my dad and I shared something pretty vulnerable in the film. Literally an hour before he died, he was giving me all the advice he could possibly give me about how to have success in my life. One of the things he said to me was, don't gain weight because men won't want you. He didn't mean to hurt me, but that message in that moment had me think, if I have weight on my body, I'm not beautiful and I will not be loved. That was the beginning of realizing I needed to look a certain way and be a certain way to be able to be attractive and be loved. And then of course, we know our media is constantly bombarding us with all the stuff we see every friggin' day. And that's where it started, the wounding, that message. And that's what I got from my dad in that moment. And that laid down the foundation of I'm not okay the way I am. The rest, I kept living that until I broke that pattern with shadow work. So how can someone utilize shadow work to start learning to love themselves again and to take risks in life? You know, it is a journey and wherever you are, that's the perfect place to be. And I always say the first step is to be aware that something's not working for you, aware that you're not happy, that you're restricting yourself or limiting yourself in some way. So if you're not feeling beautiful, feeling comfortable in your skin, not happy at your relationships, something is not in alignment. So awareness is the first key. And when I work with people, that's where we start. What do you want to have happen? How do you want to be? And what is the reality? What's challenging you? And then we start to really look at the patterns. And I keep saying the patterns because that's what you need to start noticing. Oh, I have a pattern of I want to build my business but I find myself watching Netflix all day long. What is that about? The tricky thing about how to do shadow work on your own is <laughs> it's in shadow. The shadow's behind you. You can't yes. see it. And that's why it's so important to have a coach, a facilitator to guide you in a safe way, in a comfortable way, or at least a safe enough way that you feel comfortable enough to go, oh, I didn't notice that before. Because once you're able to see with new eyes, you have a breakthrough. And then when you can drop into your body and feel something different, then the game changes. Your brain chemistry, your brain wiring changes. You will be different. What kind of people do you normally see as a client? Typically now it's women, even though I do miss my men. (laughs) I used to love working with men. However, you know, for anybody that's a business person, if you have a shingle that says, I help everybody, you know, who's going to walk into your store? I mean, you might get a few people. (laughs) And so at one point after doing empowerment work with women for over 30 years, I really looked at who did I love to work with that I can support. My heart goes out to women that are starting over post-divorce, post-empty nesters, women that want to have different and better in their life in the second half of their life. I've done that. I left a marriage. I'm an empty nester. I started over. And I have a phenomenal life. I didn't have the skill set 
years ago. And most women have not been taught about this. I absolutely have a soft spot for women that are starting over. And that's typically who I work with, mostly women that want to feel empowered and want to have better love lives. I help them with the shadow work and help them empty out, but I also help them with wicked dating tips and strategies so they don't keep wasting their time on dates that are just not for them. What is amazing to me is that I'm speaking to you and you are a woman of her word, meaning you've gone through this Mm -hmm. and you've been here. So those of us who are at home or in our car or on our run right now and are listening to the podcast, this is you. You are them. You've gone through a divorce and you had some body issues Mm -hmm. that you were dealing with and you've learned how to address them and overcome them and reinvent yourself. And that to me, gives me goosebumps. It's amazing. Thank you. And I love that word reinvent because that is exactly what I did. And that's what I help women do to wake up to what's possible for them now. And I am not on the mountaintop. I know I have my own podcast. I will share my struggles with orgasm. I will share that when I was dating at first, I was slipping down the rabbit hole and dating some of the same guys like my ex-husband. And then I learned and I did the work so that my life could be the way it is now. Yes, I have the PhD in starting over and I have the flashlight to help people through the darkness to get to the light. That is true. I love it. I think that your story is great and I think you have a lot to share. I do have some more questions for you. Yeah. I want to talk to you about women who are just kind of going into this new phase of their life, just taking the steps now to get out in the world. They want to date. They want to go and meet new people and they want to try maybe a new profession or, you know, think about, hey, you know, I wanted to do this and I couldn't do it before and now I can. What would you say to those women? Wow. That's again, a great question. I always tell people I'm the no rules girl. You know, when people say, what's the rule on this dating or what's the first step? I say it's so unique to each person. So there's two things I'm going to answer to that. One is It's really great to just get back out there and see where you are in relationship to this new stage of life. If you want to start a new career and you have a great idea, go for it. If you want to jump online, go for it. With that said, I think if you can take the time to not jump, there it's, you know, a week, a month, I personally or professionally, I would say if you could take even a year to acclimate and ask yourself, what would you really want to have happen in your life? Again, get a coach, get some support to get so crystal clear about who you are now, because you're not 20 or 30, who you are now and what is most important for you now. The clearer you are about the type of person you want to partner with, type of career that you want, the more chance you're going to get it and not be traveling. Like There's a saying in 12 Steps, and I don't know if I'm going to get it right, but you don't want to take the scenic route. Though some people would prefer to take the scenic route. It's like, okay, instead of just taking that highway directly to Rome, that hill looks nice. And oh, the shrubs over there look nice. That could be fine. What I see in midlife is we feel time more. We just do. We don't want to waste years and years of dating the wrong guy, having another failed relationship, failed meaning not the one you want. Take some time to get really clear about what you want and really do the emptying out of what's happened. Because a lot of women jump right into dating and they haven't done this. They're carrying all this luggage and that's painful. So if you can do that, that would be my suggestion. It is a reinvention and we do want to just pause, take a breath and adjust and allow ourselves to dream this new chapter in consciously and not have it come from the shoulds, from the have tos, from the I betters because we've done that enough. Wow, you shared some tremendous insight with us today, and I am really thankful that you joined us. How can our listeners at home find more information about you? You can find me at coachjuniemoon.com. That's J-U-N-I-E, coachjuniemoon.com. And I also want to just offer something that I think would be helpful with anybody that's listening. I have this really great workbook. It's called How to Tame Your Inner Critic. And it's 10 powerful steps to unleash your soul purpose, to help you get clear about what you want, what your patterns are, and how to lower the volume of the inner gremlins that sometimes have you feel like you really can't have what you want or have you feeling not good enough. 
So you can go to coachjuniemoon.com forward slash inner critic gift. And that's a gift for you to do some work around this. And it's it's not like a long process, but Mm -hmm. it is a workbook that can give you some really great shift. Again, I thank you for offering us the free gift and for joining us today. Thank you very much. On the next episode of Bent Not Broken, we talk with Alison Pena, also known as the Bad Widower, as we discuss finding your inner strength. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. This has been Bent Not Broken with Juanita Kelly. Thanks for listening. You can find us online at www.bentnotbroken.co, all major podcast platforms and YouTube. Be sure to follow us on social media at Bent Not Broken Podcast.